All right, in today's video, I want to go over a couple of a couple of the last sections of the resume. Uh, the first one being the extra section, and then we'll also discuss the reference section. So far, if you've watched the, the previous videos, um, you've already highlighted your work experience, your educational achievements, and you also highlighted your skills. The extra section, the extra section may get your foot into the door for an interview or it may get your foot in the door for a job. So you, when you think of the extra section, you want to think of it as the cherry on top of the resume or on top of the cake or the resume, however you want to put it. There are several different supplemental sections that could be added to your resume. Um, which ones are important for you to include? Uh, which ones have enough information to meaningfully fill in and, and complete and which ones will improve your resume will give you an idea of what you want to include in the extra section. You have to remember that the extra section uh, you add to your resume is just another part of demonstrating to, uh, to the employer or to a, an opportunity that you're more qualified than any other uh, candidates that are applying for that opportunity. The other sections, again, of the resume, your educational background, work experience, skills, uh, that may be enough on their own, but if you have items you want to showcase that don't fit in, in those sections, you can put them at the end of the, the resume, again, to to showcase who you are. For certain jobs, these extras may impress the, the people that you're trying to impress, but for others, they it may not work or it may not impress them. If you don't have room in your resume for this section at the end of the document, uh, or you don't have any extras to list, then it's okay to not include anything in the extra section. So again, this is a section that may get you, put you above and beyond other, other candidates, but it's not a requirement if you don't have anything to list into it or if you don't have any room for, that sec for this section. A few ideas for information that you might want to include uh, in the extra section. Uh, you, you have a couple of options that you can, you can put the information in, in this section. You can combine all of the, the extras into one section, again, with the heading of extras. Doing this will help your, your extra section look more full when you highlight that this is the extra section and that it has its own little section. Uh, the second thing is you can include one or more separate sections with the headings like uh, technical skills or professional memberships or societies or even licenses. You should only give these items their own section and designated heading if you have enough items or bulleted points to fill that section and make it look substantial and meaningful. Again, I talked about professional memberships technical skills, licenses, the professional memberships and society uh, showcase that you are a lifelong learner or a lifelong member and you're always into looking to improving who you are. The technical skills section provides, um, it gives like skills in a particular area. So if you have certain computer computer programming skills that are required for a particular job, you can include those technical skills in this section, in the technical, technical skills section. For the licenses, these may also be required for certain jobs, so you want to make sure that those stand out. If they're included in that particular job, you want to make sure that those stand out. Overall, the items that are included in the extra section of a resume may 
pique a potential employer's interest that may get you that interview. The professional reference part of your resume, uh, that includes people a potential employer can contact to learn more about the work experience that you have and any job related skills that you have. You want to pick people you know that will give you a positive a positive uh, recommendation or a positive reference about you and who can provide a great deal of detail on the experiences uh, if they need to give any examples of the work that you did. You want to make sure that the individuals that you talk to or that you have listed on your reference can give that information. When, when asked to provide a list of references, you should include information about uh, the person's name, obviously, uh, the company that they work for, if it's uh, a supervisor or a peer uh, that you want to include from a, a previous uh, job, their job title, if they want to include their, their home address or another address to mail things to, include that. Uh, the email address is generally the address that that would be included, but um, you could include their, their mailing address and then their phone number. So you want to make sure that you have the person's name and, and a way to get in touch with them if a potential employer or a potential opportunity wants to reach out and get some more information about you. Unless otherwise stated, you generally only want to list three references. Uh, most jobs are okay with the, usually asking for three references, professional references, um, and that's what you should have at least available with you when you go out to interviews and things like that so that you have it right there with you. And then another thing, a very important thing, you want to make sure that if you're listing professional references, you want to make sure that you talk to those references before you actually list them. You want to give them an idea of the type of questions that might be asked or the companies that might be contacting them. The last thing you want is to list someone that's not expecting to get get a call from another place or not expecting a certain phone number to come through and they ignore that that phone call or that reference or the the request to provide additional information about you. You don't want them to be ignoring that information because that can mean that the the chance of you getting a job versus the chance of you not receiving a job or a call a call back. So make sure if you list a professional reference that you get permission from that person before listing them. 